Florida International University Pedestrian Bridge Collapse, Wikipedia Audio On March 15, 2018, a 175-foot-long, recently erected, section of the FIU Sweetwater University City Bridge collapsed onto the Tamiami Trail. The pedestrian bridge was located near the campus of Florida International University in University Park a suburb west of Miami, Florida, United States. Several cars were crushed underneath, and six deaths and nine injuries have been reported. The FIU Sweetwater University City Bridge, located at the intersection of Tamiami Trail and Southwest 109th Avenue, was planned to connect the FIU campus to student housing neighborhoods in Sweetwater. It was intended to improve pedestrian safety, as the busy crosswalks at this wide, busy intersection had been identified as a safety hazard and the site of fatal collisions. The $14.2 million project was funded with a $19.4 million transportation investment generating economic recovery grant from the United States Department of Transportation in 2013 along with state agencies. The bridge itself cost $9 million to construct. The main companies behind this construction project are Munala Construction Management, or MCM, the Miami-based construction management firm and Fig Bridge Engineers, a Tallahassee firm. Unlike most bridges in Florida, the design for this project was overseen by the university itself not the Florida Department of Transportation. Background The full 320-foot-long bridge was to cross both a major roadway and a parallel water canal. Tamiami Trail here has six lanes of traffic plus two turn lanes. One main span of the bridge, crossing the roadway only, was rolled into place and erected five days earlier on Saturday. March 10. The second canal span, access ramps, and Cable State Tower had not yet been built. Pedestrian use was to begin when the whole project was complete. The school was on spring break at the time of collapse. The section of the bridge that collapsed weighed 950 short tons and fell onto several cars on the roadway below. Construction on the bridge began in March 2016 and was scheduled to be completed in December 2018. The bridge's prefabricated main span was assembled adjacent to the highway and constructed using accelerated bridge construction, a technique promoted at the university. It was lifted into place on Saturday morning, March 10, five days before the collapse during a weekend closure of the highway. The ABC method was touted to significantly reduce the risk to workers, walkers, drivers, and minimized traffic disruptions for construction. It was installed by Munala Construction Management. On Tuesday, March 13, the third day after lifting of the main span, the project's lead engineer discovered cracks at the north end of the span. He reported this by voicemail to an FDOT employee. He thought this was not an immediate safety issue, merely something that would need to be repaired later. The FDOT recipient was away for days and did not hear this message until the day after the collapse. At 9 a.m. on the morning of Thursday 15, a university employee heard a loud cracking whip sound while under the bridge span, waiting for a red traffic light. At that same 9 a.m. time, the design-build team met for about two hours at the construction site to discuss today's crack. Representatives from both FIU and the Florida Department of Transportation were present. The FIG lead engineer's conclusions were that the structural integrity of the bridge was not compromised and that there were no safety concerns raised by the presence of the crack. The mayor of Miami-Dade County, 
Carlos A. Jimenez, said that workers conducted a stress test on Thursday morning. U.S. Senator Marco Rubio tweeted that engineers were tightening loosened cables on Thursday. The cables that suspend the number Miami Bridge had loosened and the engineering firm ordered that they be tightened. They were being tightened when it collapsed today. His description of them as suspension cables was likely a layman's misstatement. They were adding tension to the steel rods inside a cement diagonal element at the north end. Collapse At approximately 1.30 p.m., the north end of the installed bridge span sagged deeply, then fractured at the first diagonals, folded, and immediately dropped the heavy full span onto the roadway below. A surveillance video shows the collapse sequence took only a few video frames. An eyewitness reported that at the moment before collapse, a blue box fell loose from a crane hook, dropping onto the roof of the bridge very near where the roof and span then immediately broke apart. In the videos, this is the larger dark crane on the left, not the smaller green crane. The video shows several workers on the roof at that same spot. The span that collapsed weighed 950 short tons. At the time of the collapse, the roadway was open and there were multiple cars stopped at a traffic light under the span. Eight cars are reported to have been crushed. Six deaths have been reported, with nine injured and the death toll expected to rise. One construction worker was killed and two others were hospitalized, and few student was also presumed dead. The bridge was built of concrete rather than steel, to avoid feeling bouncy vibrations from traffic. Concrete designs are roughly ten times heavier than steel. The bridge was made using a new recipe for concrete that aims to be self-cleaning. It stays white just from the action of sunlight. The main bridge span was built away from its final position, and then rolled and lifted into place in just one day. This avoided months of traffic blockages or delays and is safer for bridge workers. This now common technique is called accelerated bridge construction. FIU has a nationally recognized center for developing and teaching the ABC techniques, so they wanted to showcase that in their new pedestrian bridge. ABC requires that the moved segment be fully self-supporting without much temporary bracing, and that it be rapidly connected to its final position. Bridge Design Aftermath Concrete is very strong under compression loads, moderately good under bending or twisting loads, and quite weak under tensile loads. Steel's properties are the reverse. Concrete designs are made much stronger by embedding steel rods or cables that are stretched to keep the concrete strongly compressed all the time, regardless of external permanent or temporary tensile loads. This bridge had long horizontal runs of tensioner cables or rods along the length of the deck and roof, and short tensioner rods in each diagonal concrete strut. In this bridge design, many of the diagonal struts carry tension loads rather than compression loads. It was expected that the many tensioner bolts would need some adjustment as the span settled onto its permanent support piers. Initial reports of the bridge collapse indicated the new pedestrian bridge was a cable-stayed bridge design. However, later reports indicated the design may have actually been a modified truss bridge, with the aesthetic appearance of a cable-stayed bridge. The bridge used self-cleaning concrete trusses arranged to align with cables from a central column, rather than aligned in conventional truss patterns. The superstructure of the bridge was unusually heavy due to a concrete upper roof deck, concrete trusses, concrete base, and its length. Conventional steel superstructures of comparable design and load capability, can be one-tenth the weight. 
According to the winning MCM design build proposal for the bridge project, the design featured the following. The superstructure shape for the new signature pedestrian bridge is innovative and one of a kind. We have reinvented the traditional I-beam in a magnificent scale with a special transformation of an open truss down the middle, improving both its functionality and form for a 30-wide path. On March 16, the Florida Highway Patrol announced Southwest 8th Street between Southwest 107th and 117th Avenues and the eastbound Southwest 8th Street exit from the Florida Turnpike would be closed indefinitely while debris removal and investigations were conducted. A team of 15 people from the National Transportation Safety Board began their investigation that morning.